We are back and hitting Helldivers once again because this is a big day. A big day indeed, as Arrowhead has been hinting at a balance patch and it has now arrived. Now, I'm going to be running you through all the changes, and this one comes in two portions, and it's pretty lengthy, including a full written explanation and then some base stat value changes as well. There's also a new super credit store offering, and I do recommend one of these armor sets. And then, as if that's not enough, the dev team also keeps setting Twitter on fire with a message posted yesterday. Welcome back to the channel. This is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and before we begin, I wanted to say thank you so much for your continued support. The channel smashed past the 200,000 subscriber mark yesterday, and it seems to be gaining momentum, which is just mental. I mean, that's a huge milestone, and I'm still on cloud nine. Again, thank you. In case you haven't done so already, remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts, and it's time to hit those drop pods and check out the latest from Helldivers. As always, if you've seen any of my previous Helldivers videos, you know I always try to include chapters so you can skip around and repeat sections. And again, they are up in place for this one as well. Okay, here we go into all the changes. And I don't know how Johan and the staff are keeping up this pace, but whatever they are doing over there, do not stop it because seeing fixes and changes coming about in rapid order like this, well, as a player, yeah, you love to see it. Now, of course, we have a somewhat new Superstore armor offering that I wanted to touch on first. I think I'm a little late to the party with this one, but it's important to know on PC, if you highlight the piece of armor first and then press the tab key, it will display the stats on those armor pieces. I personally recommend any pieces that increase speed and stamina regen, and the CE74 breaker fits that bill nicely. I also tend to stay away from anything with better accuracy, etc. Instead, focusing in on more stem carrying capacity or more grenades. And this armor does have plus two capacity on grenades. The Enforcer armor does look decent and has higher armor values, which are currently bugged. Or is it? More in just a moment, hint, hint. And the 50% explosive damage resistance can be clutch. I mean, it's your call, but I'm all about speed. And also, very quickly before we dive into those patch notes themselves, the official Helldiver Twitter account posted this one yesterday as if we didn't need another mech tease. It says, Helldivers, the XO45 Patriot exosuits are in full production in the factories of Tian Quan. I don't know, I probably butchered that one. Ready for deployment on the battlefield soon. And I'm going to tell you that there is no mention of mechs currently in these latest patch notes. So if you see a mech in game, it's going to be the result of a dev spawning them in, you know, that sort of thing. But they seem to be very, very close. And all I can say is bring on the mechs, baby. Now onto the changes. And this is being labeled as minor patch 1.000.100 interesting use of minor there, right? Indicating there might be a major patch follow-up. I mean, I have some questions now. This patch is 1.6 gigs in size. I checked it myself as it was downloading this morning, and it is currently only available on PC. PS5 will get it soon. I would expect it to still be in certification with Sony, but that's just my guess. But again, it should happen soon on PlayStation. So to kick off these patch notes, we got a lengthy explanation from Baskinator over on the official Helldivers Discord outlining some of these tuning changes, outlier weapons, which we knew there were some, and gear, and why the changes had to happen. Here's what she had to say. This is the first round in a never-ending series of balance changes, and we believe it's important to be completely transparent about our approach to game balance, which I completely agree with. Please more transparency is never a bad thing, especially when it comes to weapons and stratagems that you have strong opinions about. Our goal is to give you a wide range of weapon choices where each gun has its purpose and none is strictly better than another. Sure, you're going to have your own favorites, but it should come from your personal preference, not from the universally agreed knowledge of which gun is the strongest. Generally, we balance each item according to its quirk, so if a weapon is very effective at what it does, it should come with a significant disadvantage to balance its power. 
So I guess what we're looking at going forward is weapons aren't just going to be power upon power upon power. It's going to do something very specific, very well, but it's also going to have disadvantages. The AC-8 autocannon is a good example of a well-balanced weapon. It packs a powerful punch, has very good range, but requires you to carry an ammo backpack or have a friend assist you. The GL-21 grenade launcher is the opposite example. It's a good general purpose weapon that gives you so much flexibility, it obviously can't deal too much damage without becoming overpowered. But weapons that are both powerful and versatile become a no-brainer choice during the weapon selection phase. It robs you of your own agency as stale meta builds force you to make an unfair choice between a fun weapon and an effective one. In short, powerful weapons can't be too versatile. Versatile weapons can't be too powerful. Having said all that, after analyzing player feedback and the data we've collected over the past month, we found three biggest offenders of that principle, and I use all three of these. The SG-225 Breaker, the RS-422 Railgun, and the SH-32 Shield Generator Packpack. All three of those were quite strong with two little downsides, overshadowing all other options on higher difficulty levels. So with this patch, they're getting significant downsides to balance their power. However, we strongly believe that the changes won't ruin this build, but rather help the affected items find their place among the other options and stay effective in capable hands. On a more personal note, I know that having your favorite toy nerfed absolutely sucks. Yes, it does. Investing countless hours into mastering a weapon is an incredible dedication from you, which is the main reason we're making this game in the first place. And then having that weapon weakened feels like a punishment for being too good at the game. But I implore you to not compare a changed item with its older version, but to evaluate the existing one as it is and see if it still has a place in your heart. We thank you for your dedication and commitment to spreading democracy in the most optimal way possible. Now it's up to us to make it as fun and entertaining as we can. Oh, and we also buffed a bunch of weapons as well. And then they finish up with an additional note from Fluffy on the Railgun's balancing changes. They're pretty specific here. Listen to this, quote, The railgun was overperforming in its ease of use and convenience. We therefore made it so that the safe mode of the railgun is not able to penetrate heavier armor, but the unsafe, overcharged mode is still able to penetrate the heavier armor. Okay, so if we're rocking the railgun, we're going to have to switch it into unsafe mode and ride that fine line. In addition, the damage that the railgun does to massive body parts is reduced, meaning you need to land headshots and other specific weak point shots for it to have maximum efficiency. Okay, so lots there, and I'm pretty sure you zeroed in on the breaker, railgun, and shield gen backpack changes, all three of which received changes, and all three I will touch on in these full patch notes. Beginning with the activation of planetary hazards, so these are now switched on, and I've been waiting for this one, as now many planets will have additional environmental challenges that will appear at random while we are deployed, including things like fire tornadoes, meteor showers, and much, much more. I mean... I cannot wait to see this one at full force. The clips that are going to be posted from this alone are going to be hilariously epic. There's also been a change to eradicate missions, thank goodness, as they will now require more kills and enemies will spawn more often, which, okay, doesn't sound that good overall, but, okay, here we go. The mission times were previously too short, and they have now been doubled in length to give us time to complete. So, more kills, more spawns, and more time, yeah, I can deal with that. Moving on to the weapons, starting off with the breaker, which has had its mag size decreased by three, so from 16 down to 13, as well as a near doubling in recoil pattern from 30 up to 55. I'm going to check that one out as soon as I post this video, but less ammo and double the recoil? I'll let you know. The Punisher picked up an additional 20 ammo, increased stagger force, and an increase in damage per pellet. Remember, this is a shoddy, so it's from 40 to 45, and again, that's per pellet. The Breaker Spray and Prey now has increased armor pin, increased fire rate from 300 up to 330, increased pellets from 12 to 16 per shot, and the mag size was decreased from 32 down to 26. So wow, that's a lot of changes just there alone for the S&P. 
The railgun also got some interesting changes, most of which we touched on earlier, as the enemy armor pin is now decreased in safe mode along with decreased damage against durable enemy parts. Again, so TLDR here, we need to switch it over to unsafe mode and aim for the head. Got it. The flamethrower also got a big damage increase by 50% per second, and the laser cannon also saw increased damage against durable enemy parts, increased armor pin, and improved ergonomics, which is weapon handling. Again, leave me some feedback on where you think this first weapon balance pass lands for you. I'm looking forward to testing these out for myself. All right, on to the stratagems, and the shield gen pack has now received increased delay before recharging. So watch out if you use this, which I do on and off. Once it is depleted, we will now be exposed for even longer before it begins to regen. Also, the Orbital 120mm HE now has increased duration of bombardment and decreased spread, and the same actually now goes for the 380mm HE Barrage as well. Fixes have been a priority with the player base for a while now, as there are certainly things that have needed improving and or tweaking. And by the way, there are 17 fixes listed here in total. The monster fix is that armor rating values not reducing damage as intended has apparently now been fixed. All right. I can't wait to see how this one pans out. What's going to happen when you run different armor values now, especially on those 7s, 8s, and 9s? Certain bug holes were really hard to destroy in the past, requiring 3 or 4 grenades, like Stalker Nest, and that's been addressed, which is great news. Anti-aliasing toggle on PS5 has apparently now been fixed. Lighting, especially on seriously dark planets, has also been handled, and I've been on planets that were just literally pitch black, but, you know, I kind of liked it, as it added to the tension of the mission. Anyways, they've apparently fixed it. Flashlight efficiency has also been improved. Errata Prime, aka Space Afghanistan, now has improved visibility during those seriously thick sand rainstorms. Low lighting graphic settings have also been updated as they would make the images look blurry on that specific graphic setting. Timing issues on the Extract E710 objectives have been handled. Oh, that's an interesting one. Those damn teammate doors that require two Helldivers to activate have also been modified, as now, after a few seconds of pressing the button, our players will automatically let go instead of having to press Interact to take our hands off those buttons. Thank you for that one. Huge assets floating above the ground after large explosions have now been reworked, and oh boy, listen to this one, Helldivers. Standing next to the ICBMs during launch will now get you properly toasty with a chance of not-so-spontaneous combustion. Yes, I love it. Time to go find an ICBM mission and test this one out for myself. And finally, and thank you for sticking with me, there's a fix for unthrowable snowballs, i.e. I guess our stratagems after getting ragdolled. There's also a fix for being able to use grenades after drowning. By the way, I still don't know why the galaxy's finest never actually received aquatics training. Hmm. Camera POVs will no longer lock onto our corpses and blocking spectator mode. Thank you. <laughs> Helldivers now take damage from fire and other AOE effects generated by players. And the final bit here is that armor no longer stretches out when dismembered, which always looked super funky when it happened. There's also a very lengthy known issues area, which I'm gonna try and compress here for you. So these are currently not fixed, but the dev team sees them, and I guess they are busily working on fixes, including crashing issues after several high power stratagems are deployed, picking up items from caches taking way too long. I agree with that one. Characters stuck and frozen for extended periods of time when we're interacting with those caches. Bunker items are unable to be picked up. I've seen that one. No loadout selections on PS5 after using the activity card hud displays different numbers between client and host i've also seen that one before default armor showing while viewing a war bond interesting text chat box covering cinematics letterbox while extracting and of course login rate limiting disconnects ui issues and games that are not joinable Woo. I know there was a lot there, and again, thanks for sticking with me. And by the way, here's the last pieces. Our major order campaign has one day to go, and we're still sitting at 100% on Heath and Angel's Venture. But you know you need to keep an eye out for anything sneaky Game Master Joel tries to pull on us last minute. That's worth 
45 medals. Also, today's personal order, so this is the daily, is to kill 500 Terminids for 15 War Bonds, which should be entirely doable in a couple of missions, if not one. Okay, that's all we've got time for today, as if that wasn't enough. I've got some hell diving to do. I've got some things to test out. Here I come, ICBMs. <laughs> Check in the video description for a link to the full patch notes. And oh, by the way, breaking news as I was recording this straight from the Helldivers Twitter account, the PS5 version of this patch is now ready to download. Okay, so there you go. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my future upload alerts. All my socials can be found in the video description, including Twitter and Discord, where I stay pretty active on both. By the way, speaking of Discord, again, check in the video description for an open invite link to my official Discord server, where we have a super fast growing Helldivers community, complete with tips and tricks areas, general discussions, and of course, the ever popular LFG or looking for group channels where you can find like-minded hell divers to squat up with also you'll have at your disposal those free discord voice channels so you can turn on those mics and coordinate your attacks thanks again for crushing my personal channel goal of 200,000 subscribers and i guess now what we set our sights on 250k i'm still stunned and again thank you so much until the next one this is lieutenant buzz lightbeer signing off <laughs>